Chirenge rwendi chatu tieni tijisamale Mkala mwenye janja maza kuchire zofunika Tisamale mapiri tizari mombi tengu So ibaza kumafaki tale titae mosa mala Taka yoli mayakuka, ndiku kongoloka Vula ikufuta, tiko likute ntedwa So sezi chifu wacha kuonongeka kwa chirengedwe Abo mama bungwe, amipingo makampani since time immemorial, the environment and all its natural resources have been beneficial to people. In Malawi, government recognizes the importance of institutionalizing and harmonizing the process of managing the environment and natural resources for sustainable social and economic development. The 2010 Malawi State of the Environment and Outlook Report is a comprehensive analysis of the Malawi environment. In this series, we take a look at the current state of biodiversity in Malawi, opportunities provided by biodiversity, threats to biodiversity, and key strategies to improve biodiversity. Biological diversity, commonly referred to as biodiversity, refers to the variability of all living organisms, including plants and animals, and also the ecological habitats to which they are part. Malawi is gifted with many natural resources that are useful in many ways such as sources of raw materials for agro-industrial development and exports, tourism, mining, food, income, energy and fresh water. Agrobiodiversity contributes about 40% of the gross domestic product GDP and accounts for more than 90% of employment and 90% of merchandise export earnings. In this country, one of the greatest iconic features is Lake Malawi, the eighth largest water body in the world. The Rift Valley icon stretches from Karonga in the north to Mangochi in the south over a distance of about 580 kilometers and a width of about 75 kilometers. While the lake provides many tourism opportunities that bring forex to the nation and contribute to social economic development, local people also get employment through fishing. Ninety-five percent of Malawi's fish species is endemic to Malawi, most of them being Mbuna fish, scientifically known as haplochromite cichlids. The lake, which was voted one of the most beautiful lakes in the world by international travel experts early this year, was also voted a World Heritage Center by UNESCO a couple of years ago. The lake hosts over 1,000 endemic fish species. Indeed, in Malawi, there are more than 800 species, and the, most of these species are endemic to Malawi. In other words, they are only found in Malawi and nowhere, nowhere else. Now, what you can actually see is part and parcel of the collection of uh, the uh, specimens collected from Malawian waters. So far in this museum, we have got about 300 uh, specimens, different species, most of which are described and some are not really described. Most of the species uh, uh, found in here are um, the most common species found in our water bodies. But of course, there are some layer species which are also found in Lake Malawi. For example, yes. um, we have uh, what is referred in our common uh, language, referred to Nkunga, which is a snake looking type of fish. It's actually very fatty, very oil. Uh, people like it very much. It's only found in the local areas and it's uh, an extremely layer species. Also in this bottle we have another species which is referred to the lungfish. The unique about uh, this fish, if you can see, it has got uh, the, uh, the fins, yes. uh, which are sort of like finger-like, mm -hmm. uh, which is quite unique. Most of uh, the specimen that you, 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 you see, they have got uh, the normal fins. Mm -hmm. Also, in addition to that, we have some uh, 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 fish like, you know, what is referred to samamoa. Samamoa. Yeah, in our local language, we say uh, it doesn't drink 
beer. Yeah. Chambo fish, another endemic fish species in Lake Malawi, is known for its wonderful taste, making it the exclusive dish in most of the country's resorts and other tourism destination areas. Lake Chilwa, recognized as a natural resource of international significance by its inclusion as a Ramses site, is one of Africa's most plentiful lakes. 20% of all the fish caught in Malawi come from Chilwa, supporting over 6,000 local fishermen. The area is also important for the local residents. Districts of Zomba, Machinga and Palombe use Lake Chilwa's water for domestic use and irrigation. Irrigated rice constitutes an estimated 50% of Malawi's total rice crop yields around the area. The grassland supports livestock which provides another source of income through the sale of meat and milk. The lake also provides a source of income for an estimated 100 bird catchers. Roughly 350,000 resident birds breed in the wetlands and migratory birds also use them as a stopover. But at current consumption rates, the lake cannot sustain the fishermen's and bird catchers' rates of extraction. Increased demand for bird meat has been the cause for particular concern for the region's biodiversity. <laughs> In 1999, Danida provided a grant of over 300 million kwacha for a project that focused on empowering local communities. Through institutional capacity building and coordinated technical support, local ministries were created in the three districts bordering the lake. Though the project only completed one out of the two phases, it was a success as the Danita also funded 41 awareness sessions which utilized various community outreach efforts including a local band, a drama group, creation of 43 working groups and the development of a wetlands management plan. Mulanja Mountain, the highest mountain in Central Africa with a height of close to 3,000 feet above sea level, is also another feature Malawi is known for. The Mulanja Mountain Forest Reserve is one of the most rich and unique forest reserves in Malawi, uh, which is home to a lot of natural resources, uh, be it plants and animals, which are also not found anywhere else in the world. Uh, this is a home to richest biodiversity that we may have in Malawi and the, the Mulanji Mountain Conservation Trust is working uh, in different, uh, with different communities. The idea is to raise people's understanding and the awareness of how important these resources are to them, to the nation and to the international community as well. The mountain hosts many flora and fauna which are endemic to Malawi, including the Mulanji Cedar. Mulanji Mountain is also a source of major rivers, Ruo, Tuchila, Ishenya and others. Apart from this, the mountain is also used as a tourist attraction site as it attracts tourists from all over the world. My name's Jason. Oh, Jason. I'm from Australia. Australia. From Brisbane. Okay. Yeah. And I'm Terry. I'm also from Australia, but I live in England. Beautiful sunny weather, beautiful view, and really enjoyed it. I'd like to come back with my brother and maybe some of our friends. Yeah. Promotion of ecotourism has helped Malawi market the mountain and its natural resources, thereby increasing the visibility of the country's biodiversity on the international scene. Local people also get firewood, honey, timber, traditional medicine, and other benefits from the mountain, which is also believed to be mystified with spirits. Utilization of biodiversity or natural resources at the local level is also influenced by cultural dimensions. For example, owls are associated with witchcraft and as a result, they are not hunted for food. Some forests, for example those at Kuluvin Sanje, have religious values as they are considered shrines in local religious beliefs and are thus protected. Apart from these shrines, other protected areas are graveyards. 
These areas are protected because of the belief that it is a no-go and no-play zone for human beings, since those who stay there are the dead. Both the shrines and the graveyards provide a picture of sustainable conservation of biodiversity. Most animals and plant species found in these areas are very scarce and therefore biodiversity conservation is very important for the continuity of such species. Malawi has a number of special birds. The avi fauna of Malawi includes a total of 650 species of which one has been introduced by humans and 31 are rare or accidental. 10 species are globally threatened. Several subspecies of birds are endemic to Malawi. One of these species, the white-winged Apollis, is a bird that occurs in the canopy of evergreen forest between 500 meters and 1,550 meters. This beautiful little bird is classified as vulnerable according to BirdLife International 2001. The total population in Malawi is estimated at 100 pairs and with the accelerated deforestation, even of protected areas, it is seriously threatened. This bird nests in a lichen which is found in clean high altitude forest and Zomba Mountain has many such lichen. The white-winged Apollis builds its nest in this lichen. At the foot of Zomba Plateau, 10 pairs have been located. The black rhino is another characteristic feature of Malawi's biodiversity. The black rhino has been endangered together with other species such as eland, Birch's zebra, roan antelope, Lichtenstein's hartbeest and Cape buffalo. In the late 1980s, the last remaining black rhino disappeared from the Moavi Wildlife Reserve in the Lower Shuri River Valley due to poaching. This led to the reintroduction of the black rhino through the Malawi South Africa Wildlife Development Project in Lewonde in the latter part of 1993 when two rhinos were put there signaling the start to the most successful wildlife project ever undertaken in Malawi. A second breeding pair of black rhino arrived in Lewonde in 1998 and then a third in 2000 which necessitated increasing the sanctuary holding area to 40 square kilometers. A surplus of male calves have been born in the sanctuary which has necessitated the removal of four young male rhinos to Majete and South Africa and this has effectively reduced Luonde rhino population. However, biodiversity is threatened by various factors including habitat loss due to population growth and agricultural expansion, overexploitation, the introduction of invasive alien species, and the increasing frequency of floods and droughts due to climate change. Cultural practices such as Gulewangkulu, Choba, and other traditional dances also benefit from biodiversity as these dances use natural resources to create their regalia. The regalia are also used in the traditional African mask, which is a common feature for most traditional dances in the region. Traditional medicine also benefits from biodiversity, as traditional doctors get their medicine from the trees in the country's forest. With this in mind, there should be strong efforts to continue replacing the beneficial vegetation and also avoid overexploitation. Another challenge facing biodiversity is the presence of invasive alien species, such as the water hyacinth. These are biological organisms that are introduced into an ecosystem from outside but usually cause environmental and economic harm by displacing native species through competition, predation or transmission of pests and diseases. Official records indicate that there are 29 species of invasive alien species in Malawi comprising 17 plants, 3 fish and 9 invertebrates. The number has now increased to 31 with the discovery of black wattle and eucalyptus bug. Thus, loss of biodiversity would lead to loss of ecosystem services derived from natural resources and increased vulnerability of livelihoods for communities that depend on these resources. These services include sources of food, provisioning service and flood control regulating service, among others. There is need, therefore, to conserve biodiversity 
in order to avoid losses or disturbances of the ecosystem and biological habitats which form the environment. It is imperative that Malawi needs to protect and nurture its amazing biodiversity, some not found anywhere else in the world. <laughs>